Good morning. Hopefully you can see and hear us okay. Pippa Michael here again for our draw along. I've not, I've purposefully not shown the image just yet in case of any arachnophobes. So just a disclaimer, full warning. Today we are drawing the Huntsman Spider. So I'm just going to give it a couple of seconds so that if anyone would rather not see a big spider on their screen, they've got an opportunity to look away now. Okay, Huntsman Spider. Ta da it's very um, in keeping with the season, I think. So continuing on with our journey around Australia, looking at wildlife, we are going to tackle this little, little, not so little, arachnid. Um, this is a first for me again. So I've never drawn, from my memory, I've never drawn a spider. I've drawn insects, but I've never drawn a spider. So this is going to be another new challenge. Hello, everyone. Thank you for saying hi. I know that obviously the text working now. So hi, Mel, Susie, Deneen. Jill, Emily and Freya, thank you so much. So I'm going to be drawing landscape wise this time because obviously to fit in these glorious long legs we're going to need to be working our page this way round rather than portrait. Eden's here and it's her 11th birthday today and she's still chosen to draw a spider. Happy birthday Eden! Happy birthday Michael! Happy birthday! Uh, thank you for joining us and we are very brave to come along and draw this spider as well. I imagine the numbers will be lower this week because of because of our subject matter, but maybe they're gloriously misunderstood. Michael's going to be sharing some facts out as we draw along again today um, to teach us all about this incredible creature. And we are going to be tackling the actual image. So, as always, I'm drawing with a HB pencil. I'm just going to show you the colours I plan on working with today. Black as always. I've got some grey in there. Um, mostly browns, like a reddish brown, a sandy brown, and then a bit of orange I've noticed in the picture as well. So they're the colours I'm choosing to work with today. Um, I think the challenging part on this today is going to be getting the form right, getting the accuracy with those legs. And then when you look at the image as well, it's the hairs on the body. I think that's going to be some uh, quite a big feature that we need to include on our drawing. He reminds me of the spider out of Harry Potter. What's his name? Aragog? I don't think. Um, so, should we get started? Let's, let's see what we can do. I'm going to have to move my picture out of the way just so I can see my page. So hopefully you've got your reference material. I've got a feeling I'm not going to get this right first time, so we'll just get started. I've had to position the camera in a really awkward place again this, this week, so it's right in my face, making it very, very difficult. So I'm starting it off roughly with like the head and body shape, which actually, in terms of the page, is not taking up a lot of the space. It's the legs that are really sort of spread out and taking up a lot of room. And now that I've started, I've realised I've started too far up the page because I actually want to get all these legs in and those back legs aren't going to show. So I'm going to have to move it down. Have you copied me, Michael? I've done the same. Sorry. Um, so I'm going to move it down slightly. So again, that part of his body and then the middle part. So that we've got room for these legs to come in. So this is just rough sketching again lightly so that I can go around and rub out the, the messy lines afterwards. I'm just sketching in the main shapes as I see them and then I'll go back and, and make sure that they're a bit more accurate afterwards. But to begin with I just want to give myself like a, a starting point. There's quite a lot of detail in these legs. I think it would be easy to sort of rush the legs as almost like little sticks. But actually you can see there's joints in them and I want to try and get that as accurate as possible today. This is definitely a new one, isn't it? How are you finding it, Michael? <laughs> Different, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Obviously we've got to make sure we've got full eight legs in, else um, it won't be obvious what he is. We all know that spiders have got eight legs. Now my image actually crops off part of the legs, so we've got to again use our imagination and use the other legs as reference material to fill in the blanks. And then that last, that fourth leg on the front is, looks, is more in the foreground, so it's looking a little bit thicker and chunkier. So the ones that are further behind look slightly thinner because there's perspective, so they're further away from us, they're going to look slightly thinner. But they wouldn't all be the same thickness as you draw them. I've actually got my own pet spider. Yeah, Michael's been keeping his pet spider in his bedroom. It's not one like this, thankfully, I'd like to point out. <laughs> it's growing bigger. It ain't a huntsman. 
I'd have moved out. Yeah. First time here for Emmerich. Thank you for joining us, Emmerich. I hope you enjoy it. Don't get too stressed if it get it doesn't go quite to plan. They never, they never do go quite as we imagine them in our heads. But as I say a lot, whatever you end up with is going to look better than that blank piece of paper you start with at the beginning. Uh, shall I start sharing? Yeah, if you want to share some facts, Michael. So this um, is a famous spider from Australia, native to Australia. Uh, hunts on spiders don't spin webs. Ah, so not your tip, not what we associate with being spiders. Then they don't yeah. spin webs. Um, huntsman spiders often live in colonies. 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 Ah, oh. so they're not lone, lone creatures, lone sharks. Um. That's from spiders and lifespans that are about two years. Oh, they live quite a... For an insect, then, that's... Yeah, I would say that's... Exactly. Well, not an insect, an arachnid. I'd say they live quite a long time, really. Have you ever seen a huntsman spider in real life? I have seen one... I'm sure I saw one in an Australian zoo where it was nicely contained and I was able to stay away from it and be safe, but not for real life. I'm not sure how I would cope with that. Has anybody else? I don't know. No, you haven't. <laughs> Never know. Well, you haven't been to Australia, so it's highly unlikely. Oh, I might have. <laughs> I think I'd know if you had. Maybe I'm just a robot. What? Have you got any more facts, Michael? Have you got any more facts, Michael? Yeah. Um, average size, body length about 2.5 centimetres and leg, leg span 15 centimetres. So they are mostly legs, as we can see from this reference. Have you got a ruler for hand, Michael? Yeah. Do you want to just grab it for me? So body size about two centimetres, and then leg span about 15 centimetres. So according to my picture, my picture is just marginally small, marginally bigger than what a huntsman spider would, would be in real life. But that is still pretty big. <laughs> I would still run a mile. Oh, don't want the legs too Morning, Joe. Joe's joining us as well on social media. You having a go, Joe? You going to draw this one today? Mm. Nope. <laughs> oh, what else do we have? So I'm enlarging on my picture now to so I can see um, the details a bit more of the face and the body. So this was really rough shapes. Now that I'm I'm done with the legs, I'm going to go back to the body and, and adjust this for better accuracy. It's not quite a circular shape. Female, almost oval. Sorry, Michael. Can you carry on? <laughs> um, female hunts and spiders lay about two hundred eggs. Ooh, two hundred baby spiders. Yeah, yeah. Joe, this one looks challenging. It's a no from me. <laughs> we'll see. Looking quite spidery already. Now this front part of his face looks a bit. It's a bit difficult to really see the details of what's going on. So we're going to, again, have to use our imagination a bit as to what yeah, we think I'm, should be there. I'm not going to do what you did because otherwise it's wrong. The, the legs are in the air, so don't do what, what Mum did. If, if, um... Well, no, he's, quite, he's on a rock, isn't he? I think he's holding on to a rock by the looks of things. Yeah, but no, what I meant was the head is... One of my legs are connected to the head. Ah, so you need to adjust that. All right. When you really look at up close, like these little front bits, well, I want to say they're pincers, but I don't think they are. They really look they fluffy. Are. They don't look shell-like. They look furry. That's how they bite. Is it? Yeah. Okay. So if you got bitten by a hunter's spider, it's not like painful. It's just like itch and like just really irritating. And then what happens? Down. No, hunts with spiders are dangerous. We need to look at that fact up if we haven't got it in your list, Michael. Tiny Google search. Tiny Google search. Tiny Google search. Let's have a look what happens to the <laughs> huntsman spider spite. Just don't show the picture. No. Oh, I thought they were. So yeah. you're teaching me now. So yeah, huntsman spiders bite. Um, 
are harmless to all humans, despite their intimidating exp- appearance. They are commonly found in Australia and various other parts of the world. They prefer habitats like tree bark, wood piles and human houses. Okay. Instead of spinning the webs, which as you said, they don't spin the webs, they hunt and chase their prey with remarkable speed and agility. So they like, literally, that's why they're the huntsman spider, they chase them down. The venom is generally not, po- not potent or harmful to humans, causing only mild symptoms like pain, swelling and itchiness. Well, there we go. I don't know why I had in my head that they were more dangerous than that. Yeah. They just look it, don't they? <laughs> Which I suppose is a good defence mechanism in itself. Who's the best geography? <laughs> yeah, well, that, that would be research skills there, Michael. I'm impressed. I'm going to get a couple of these eyes in. And they're not all the same size. The middle two look smaller than the outer two. They're mostly... And then there's littler ones above as well. Their colours are mostly like grey or brown in colour. So not many different colours. Yeah, bright they're not like yeah. brightly coloured like a lot they're of insects not. can be. And then that big bulbous bit at the back. Uh, location Laos or and Asia. Okay, so not just Australia. Do you no. find them in other places? Uh, diet large insects and possibly rodents. Wow. And they're quite a small spider, really. Whoa, that's a lot of eyes. Yep, eight eyes, eight legs. I'm just going to adjust that back a bit because it doesn't look quite right to me. I think I need it to go longer. How do you draw the joints? So it's almost like I'm drawing several sausages. For each leg, I can see four oblongs. The tiny little foot at the end, which if we look... Yeah, in the image. You can see there's a little foot on the end. You've got a, the next part, should we call that the ankle joint, which is wider at the end towards the foot and goes up skinnier. So you want to taper it in to each, towards each joint. The next one looks fairly the same thickness all the, all the way along. And the next one tapers up towards the body. So it goes thicker towards the body. So that's how I'm draw, drawing it. So slightly thicker at the body on the here, tapers in. This one tapers in towards that joint, that one tapers slightly out towards the foot and then a tiny little foot. And it's just putting slight angles in each time. And that's what will make it look jointed rather than just one straight leg. Or you, what you don't want is a curve. They are quite uh, geographic in that way. You've got hair on the legs as well. Like the outside of the legs. I'm going to struggle with the next one, the stonefish. It's going to be so hard. It is. If you've looked ahead, that image is going to be very a, a very nice challenge to take on as a group, I think, because it's because of the camouflage it has. It's, it's, um, I think that's going to pose new challenges, which is good. This is how we get to develop and get better, rather than just do the same thing over and over again that we're already good at. If we challenge ourselves beyond, we'll get better. Well, me, I find just... Did it same thing? No, but as in drawing different things rather than drawing the same thing over and over again. If you like, if you knew you're very good at drawing horses and you just stick to drawing horses, yeah, that's great. You'll get better at drawing horses, but you'll never get better at drawing other things. So sometimes we have to I'll push ourselves hair. out of our comfort zone. I put hair on their legs. Their legs you're right. jumping ahead, aren't you? Yeah. Uh, predators, reptiles, birds, and small mammals. Well, so they will eat huntsman spiders. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so I'm all right. I'm all right with that form. I think that's okay. Um, I meant to say at the beginning of this, if I sound it, me and Michael, if we sound a bit funny, we both come down with colds this morning and all throats are swollen up, so we're a bit clangy online. and blocked up, so apologies. Glad this is on Wanda. Right, where do we start with the colour? Where should I start? Oh, I still... feel like I'm going to start with the body, and I'm going in with a lighter brown because it is uh, a slightly lighter shade. Well, you're ahead of me now. So, like I did last week, if you were watching the Kookaburra, I'm going to try to be a bit more dramatic with my colour. So, again, there's no right or wrong way with art. This is your interpretation. And I kind of like the effect I get when I'm a little bit braver with my tones. So that I have darker tones of colour, more obvious tones of colour. Even if it's not completely accurate to the reference picture, I, I like the result of that in my artwork. So that's what I'm working on. Because again, if we just wanted a copy of that picture, we can just photocopy it. What we're doing is creating our own interpretation and our own artwork, which can never be wrong. Okay, 
Okay, now I'm going to start colouring. I'm going to put some grey in there as well, I think. And because I can see the sort of hairs on him, I'm, I'm colouring in the direction of the hairs, or the way I think they're going. see black eyes but really reflective as well you've got that little shimmer of light in there it gives him that sense of life rather than looking like a toy or a model you can, yeah, can, can you move the picture up to see the end of the leg is it this one is that better yeah i can see the grey well, i have a habit of moving my pad now that i'm not working in my pad I'm, i've been moving it around a bit so do do shout at me if i've moved oh, it and can't see a bit Top speed up to one, one m. One mile. One mile per second. No, one yeah. meter. That would be one meter per second. That's fast. Oh, that's that's what would I think trouble me <laughs> with these spiders. They're so fast. Yeah. Like, I think your normal house spiders move too quick for my liking. I'm keeping a house spider. Yeah, but contained in a box so that you can't sneak up on them. True. I'm going in with a black to add in some darker tones. And it will be to create the little spots on his... Is it the thorax? Is that the bit of the body? Um, it's been so long ago since I studied. It's been like John Sen to me. Yeah. <laughs> I've not been there. So yeah, if you haven't got a variety of pencil colours, you can always add... A black to darken the tones and give you a wider variety of tones and colours. Or mix it up. Make Mel, it up. thank you very much. I drew one of my worst fears. That's amazing. If you have been able to do this and it's a real fear for you, that's really impressive. That's a big thing to have done. So well done. Oh my god. Do my worst fears are that. That's Mine's moths. I had a bit of, you didn't see it, Michael, yesterday. What? We were cooking roast potatoes in our uh, ninja foodie and it kind of, it uses fan, a fan like it's cooking. And my other half had put garlic bulbs in there. And I opened the lid and the fan, there was a couple of seconds where the fan was still going and so the skin of the garlic flew out and I thought it was a moth and I freaked out. <laughs> I literally had to take a moment, a few breaths because I thought a moth was flying at me. Yeah, they terrify me. No, I, I don't even know why. I, I can't even justify it. I if it lays eggs in the food. No, it was just, it's, I didn't have that much time to think about it. It was just, I thought there was a fly, a moth flying at my face. And I freaked out. Oh God. So yeah, I'm more bothered by moths than I am spiders. Yeah, mine's are bats. So you said, I think from my opinion, the only reason why I hate them is just the legs and the way they move. I think, and that's what it is for me with moths. It's the way they flatter and the way they move. Kind of, I know they're not anything to be afraid of. And I like butterflies, but moths do fly faster and more erratically. I looked yeah, this up because I was convinced. Like... So um, yeah, sometimes our fears can be a little bit irrational, can't they? <laughs> Okay, I'm going to move down onto his head, which has got like a bit more of a reddish brown in it. So I've got a reddish brown ready, but I'm going to put the base colour down first. Oh, I don't get any browns on yet. Red. Yeah, there's definitely flashes of red in there, same as on the head, I can see it. And the head almost looks like a velvety texture. So I'm, as I'm adding colour, I'm sort of circling. So rather than these hairlines going like I did on the body, I'm trying to create a, a softer texture. 
by circling the pencils. Should have done the eyes first, but we'll work around them. Add the black in after. So just notice I switch colours all the time because I'm trying to match it to the picture, but also make sure it's consistent within my own picture as well so I'm like oh no that's too orangey now I need to add some more brown and then go back to the black again get those oh. darker tones with the black what are you going to say Michael? Um, Huntsman spiders shed their skin to grow yeah so a lot of spiders do this and snakes reptiles do this don't they quite a lot so it's like they wear their skeleton on the outside of their body, so as they grow they need to shed it and grow a new skin. There you go. Now I'm going to, these eyes, I'm going to really try and make them as black as possible, but with those little reflective bits there as well. So I think that will make all the difference to whether or not this looks like a realistic picture and not too cartoony. Water. You're there already? Oh, and then I've got to put back the background on afterwards as well. Yeah, if you've got time, you could try and create the rock that he's sitting on, couldn't you? go now there's a little bit of the bit around the front that looks a little bit confusing and difficult to work out we're going to try our best again it's a lot darker tone so I'm going to go in with the black add in my reddish brown and then build it up a little bit dang I've already coloured the eyes and forgot the highlight if you've done that and maybe you won't have one to hand today, but anything like that. A white gel pen, I've got one here, can sometimes help because you can then put in the highlight on top once you've, if you're painting it, once you've done all that, you can do that afterwards once it's dry. Because um, obviously I'm speaking from experience. <laughs> and what you could do, depending on how dark you've coloured the black, you could always go back after and go darker with the black to try and create, even if it's not a white highlight, a grey highlight, if that makes sense. Again, these little orange bits either side almost look like cheeks. There's some highlights there because it's almost a shiny texture. So I'm adding that in and all as well, rather.
nearly time to start tackling the legs, which is going to be an interesting one. Now, I'm purposefully leaving the individual fine hairs until I've got the base colour down on everything. So I'm going to colour everything in. And then what I'll probably do is use the water to create the watercolour. And then afterwards, with nice sharp pencils, I'll add in the fine leg hairs so that it looks very, very spidery. I'm going to start with these little fang bits at the front. That's what I would refer to them as. <laughs> I don't know what they're called. Does anyone know what they're called? No. I'm using, I know on the, on the image there's a lot of white areas, but I'm using a grey to depict that. Mandibles, that's it. I know. Thank you, Ria. <laughs> well, I see. So you see the word, you're like, yeah, I remember that now. That will stay in my memory for all of five minutes. Okay. A baby spider is called a spiderling. So that almost makes it sound cute, doesn't it? <laughs> Joe's asking, how is everyone else getting on? Are we finding this a particular challenge this week? I am. Because it's, I know I said I like drawing furry animals. And it is like his furry. But as Freya, was it Freya having a bit of difficulty with the joints and the legs? It is, it's very different to drawing a mammal. It feels very different to drawing a mammal anyway. We all hate spiders, that's Jill, Emily and Freya. Well done. Uh, I, I, I'm more bothered by moths oh, all day long. Because not only do they move fast like a spider, but they have wings that can fly as well. At least a spider can't do that. You're finished, Michael. Mm -hmm. Did you want to show your picture? Mm -hmm. You're faster than me. Oh, he's cool. So you've got the grey of the rock in the background as well. Here's Michael's. But all eight legs, all eight eyes. What happened to this leg here? Yeah. yeah it I looks like you've missed a couple of joints. No, I made it small. Oh, okay. Like it had been chopped off. <laughs> he's, he's a spider with a story to tell. <laughs> I think I could put them on like my wall, like all my pictures. Pictures, yeah. And then everyone can see them, can't they? So easy. Oh my god, I hate moths. It's not just me then. I think there's a name for that, Fabia. Um, this is hard for me. I'm only on the legs now. It is a really tricky picture, especially if this is like one of your first ones joining us. This is a tough one to come in on. That's actually a really good job. Oh, it's for you, Michael. Thank you. <laughs> um, I might as well share some more. Yeah, if you've got some more facts, share them with us, Michael. Um... It can be a social animal. Wow. It just wants to be your friend. Um, <laughs> a common name given to the family of Sparacidia. Do you want me to see, have a look and see yeah. what it says? Not that I'll be able to read it out, but I'll give it a go. Wow. Sparacidae? Oh, so this particular family of spiders. Yeah. That's the group. The yeah. largest specimens of these spiders are called wood spiders in most parts of Australia due to the com their common preference in for the inhabiting woody places. Huntsville spiders are a diverse and re relatively harmless group of spiders with 13 genera and 94 described species. So they're not bad. <laughs> they're the good guys. Is what we're getting so far. Um, many huntsman spiders, especially flat huntsman spiders, and including common huntsman spiders, 
and band enhancer spiders have rather flattened bodies adapted for living in narrow spa spaces under loose bark or rock crevices. Oh, that's cool. So the form of them have been designed for them to be able to live under um, under rocks and logs and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, this is aided by their legs, which instead of bending vertically in relation to the body, have the joints twisted so they have spread out forwards and laterally in a crab-like fashion, both brown huntsmen spiders uh heteropodia and bad huntsman spiders I can't, there's another one I'm not saying that <laughs> have less flattened bodies. The eyesight of huntsman spiders is not nearly as good as that of the jumping spiders. I can't say that name. However this their vision is quite sufficient to Fish. detect approaching humans or other larger animals from some distance. Mm. That's all. Lots of facts there. Yeah. Yeah, these legs are tricky. If anyone is struggling with these, know that you are not alone. I think I should like put my drawings on my. So yeah. the, man, I don't think I'm going to make it to the legs. As in getting them done, they are tricky. They are tricky. I have to say, this is not my favourite thing to draw. <laughs> but it's good to move out of our comfort zone. I think I put my uh, drawings on the wall. Yeah, you can make your own little art gallery, can you? Yeah. Mine just sort of, yeah, what does everyone else do with their artwork when it's done? Mine just stay in the sketchbook, generally, until Michael Elliott says, oh, I had that one. Oh, that one. You should maybe sell them. Nah. Why? Oh, they're good. They're very quite good. What does everybody else do with their artwork? Do you frame it? Do you put them up on a wall? Or do you like maybe I mean, keep them all in the sketchbook? Soon my, my, my walls are going to be full of posters. Or drawings at least. Already, these legs are getting too repetitive for me. <laughs> I'm like, bored now. I like variety. I've only done two of them. Right, two down, six to go. Of time, well, not too bad. I just need to get a wiggle on to be able to add the water as well. I'm adding colour a little bit faster now, it might look a little bit more rushed and rough, but hopefully, I can neaten it all up when I add the water. I want time for the to put the water on, but also enough time to dry so that I can then add the little hairs that we can see. Oh, my hand started to ache from this. <laughs>
halfway there. With the legs anyway. I'm doing now is trying to get a bit more consistency with the legs so I'm using the same colour first of all on each of these four legs and then I'll go in and add, add the other details. They're not all exactly the same don't get me wrong but I think I was switching colours too much and getting confused about what I was doing on the other side so this might make it easier for me. Base. Base it in with some redder tones. Not that red. Hmm. Michael, you do some more research and tell us um, about what are the numbers of, of them? Are they, are they endangered species or are there quite a lot of them? Saying not to extinct, but it's not coming up. Uh, if you Google our uh, hunting well, spiders, often endangered by tourism and its exploitation. exploitation of their limestone rocks to make cement. Okay, so again, because of human intervention, their habitats are being jeopardized, which then obviously has an impact on their numbers. It's a common theme with all of these animals that are endangered, isn't it? Mm. Always tends to be something to do with us. Well, not us personally. I didn't do it. Okay, I think that's most of the colour down. I probably want to go in with a little bit more black just to get some more defined edges, make it stand out a little bit more. And then I'm ready to use my water to turn the pencil into paint and blend the colours a bit better. So again, this is me just developing my own style so that this black isn't necessarily on the spider this is me trying to make it my own piece of artwork so I'm not outlining it as such because that would make it look a bit more cartoony I'm just adding in some more shadow and darker tones so that it looks a little bit more 3D so I'm not doing every I'm not just drawing lines around everything These legs are killing me again. <laughs> My hand is really aching from these legs, so it seems a lot. Although there's a lot of white space on this page, it does seem like this has been a harder slog this week than, than what did we do last week? What did we do? A couple of practicas? No, that was ages ago. My memory is shocking at the minute. What did we draw last week? 
I feel like we've even spoken about it then. I can't even remember. Mm. See, now that I'm not on the pad, you see what I naturally do as well when I'm drawing, I move the page around to, to take the pressure off my hand a bit. Rather than trying to angle my hand the way I want it to go, I move my page. So sorry if that's a little bit confusing. I'll try and limit the amount I do that. If I had time, what I would love to do is put in some of these shadows that you can see on the rock. You see his legs being repeated here. But I don't think... Oh, Kookaburra. That's, <laughs> that popped up on my Dropbox then. So that's what we did last week. Um, but yeah, I don't... I'm not going to have time to do that, unfortunately. But if you have time, that would be pretty cool if you can put the shadows of the legs in as well. Again, that makes it more 3D because you can, it sort of lifts it up from the page. Well done, everyone. Yeah, everyone's so good, Gabara. Yeah, thanks. That was shocking, wasn't it? Mind you, Michael couldn't remember either, so it wasn't just me. <laughs> you see, there's just this adding this little bit of black, even though it's not it's not on the photo. You can't see black lines in the photo, but I feel like it's improved my picture a little bit. So now, let's add some water and hopefully allow it to dry enough that we can add in these fine hairs. So what I'm going to have to do is start with the legs because I need those to dry because that's where most of the hairs are. So I'm going to try and do this fairly quickly. We've got about 20 minutes left. Again, in an ideal world, I wouldn't rush it as much as this, but I want to get to an end, end point. And I'm not just throwing the paint on. I start with the dark, darker tones and then blend inwards. And still reference your picture as well. Don't just try and guess it or do it from memory. Just moving the colour around a bit more. On the legs, I'm trying to create highlights because you, you can see some of it, almost some aspects. Although they've got those wiry hairs, some aspects of it look a little bit shiny as well. There's like several textures going on in this picture, so I'm going to try and leave some white space to give that impression as well. Doing it again, aren't I? Moving your page around. Much quicker doing this part than it was to draw the legs, thankfully. I don't think my hand could handle it. Ask you, Michael, a favour if you can sharpen that pencil to me to the sharper point as you can get. So, when we come to doing the hairs, you really want a nice sharp pencil so that the hairs don't come across too thick. So, you might find as you start doing it, you need to sharpen it in between because as you're using them, it blunts it down, and then you'll end up with a thicker line and it won't look so realistic.
here. How's everyone else getting on? Does anyone enjoy drawing this one like more than some of the others? Finally finished, Susie. Will you beat me again? Yes, Jill was asked, is next week the last Australia one? Yes, so next week we're doing the stonefish. So if you have been watching them for a few weeks, you know I've said I'm going to try and get mammals in as well as insects or arachnids and birds and fish so uh, we are ending on the stonefish which again is going to be a good challenge because of the way that fish looks so it's got a lot of texture going on these colors make it um, a challenge because of the camouflage so that will be it for australia we then break for a week and then we We'll come back and we're looking specifically at animals. We went to Europe, we're going to Czechoslovakia. So, yeah, so anyone who knows us knows that we got a puppy recently. And she is... Oh, Michael, stop, stop smashing up the workshop. <laughs> um, she is a half Czechoslovakian wolf dog. So I was really interested to study the animal a bit better. So I basically designed the whole term around Czechoslovakia. And they've got some really interesting animals, actually, completely. Although they're European, you'd think, oh, that's, that can't be that much different to what we've yeah. got. But actually, they've got some really cool animals. So I will start creating the events for those so that you can put them into your planner. Maybe maybe Mako, our puppy, will make a little appearance as well. I don't, know. I don't know, she's so... Oh. Please. <laughs> she's a real puppy. Maybe we can lift her up and then take her. Maybe. We'll see. We'll cool. introduce her to everyone. She can't model for us because she can't sit still unless she's no. completely unconscious. So. Yeah. <laughs> the legs are a bit short, on, but I like mine. Good, that's the main thing. That is it. And it's good that you're self-reflecting and you can see where perhaps you could improve next time. That is really a really good skill to have. As I'd say as an artist, but anyone. If you can self-reflect and go, oh, actually, next time I could do that, that better. That's an amazing skill to have. Mine's coming out all right, actually. Oh, wicked. Glad. I am really glad. So again, because you're new, you might not already know, but every Monday evening, Joe will put, upload a picture of my finished picture. So in this instance, it's going to be this spider. Um, around 6pm. If you comment with the picture of your drawing, if you want to, you don't have to, I will give you some written feedback. So I'll tell you what I think you've done really well. And I'll also give you a tip for how you can improve next time. So... Um, you just need to make sure that you do that before 9 p.m. So between 6 and 9, I, I log on to start answering, um, writing comments. You don't have to. It's just a free free thing that I do if, if it helps you to have that sort of marked work as such. But you must put it on the photo of my artwork rather than the event or anything like that because I miss them. I don't see them there. So um, I just need to do the face and the body with the water and then I'll go in and put the hairs in, hopefully the legs will have dried and that will just add, enable me to add that texture. Might overrun with them legs. They seem to be taking forever. 
Or did they? Was I, was I just get bored from drawing them? That wasn't what. How's our pup getting on? Yeah, we know we we know we've got her. That's for sure. She is um, very clever, and I think that's she's half wolf dog and half German shepherd, so they're very intelligent breeds anyway. So she is challenging us, but now she's fully vaccinated, we can start walking her properly, which will make a big difference because she's got bundles of energy. Um, she can climb the baby gates. <laughs> she figured out how to get out of a crate. She stood on the pedal of the bin to open it. So yeah, she's, we know we've got her. Let's, let's put it that way. She's keeping us on our toes, but she's lovely. You've got a new pup as well, haven't you? How's yours getting on? Like she's keeping you busy. Yep, that's definitely one way to put it. As if we weren't busy enough. <laughs> we knew we knew it would be hard work. We've had a puppy before, so we know. So it's not so not not an easy commitment to make. But um, she brings us a lot of joy. You know, she does cause us a lot of work. Now I'm at the point, hopefully, where the paint on the legs has dried enough for me to just sort of add in some of those hairs that we can see on the image if we enlarge it. And that will help create the right texture for this huntsman spider. Just going in and rubbing out any other pencil lines that I can see. Right, so I'll go in with a light brown. And there's quite a lot of hairs, actually, so we'll see... See what I've got time to do. But follow your reference image. Look for the direction of the hairs. Don't just assume that they're going a certain way. Keep looking back at your reference image because that will help you make a much more realistic application of the hairs. And they don't all go the same. They're sort of slightly curved, some of them, and they some of them cross over. They're not all going the same direction. Jill, yes, I only had ours a week and I only had one jab so far. I can't wait till he's had the second and we can go out. At least we can carry ours. Yeah, I, that was my plan, that I would socialise her by carrying her around. But she's 12 weeks old and already weighs nearly 15 kilograms. And I'm just not that strong. So that plan went out the window pretty quick. Now though, I'm noticing that there's some reddish tints on some of these hairs. So I'm just gonna add another colour, I think, as I go along. Michael, would you mind sharpening that pencil for me? Okay. Yeah. Don't forget as well, you haven't finished your picture unless you've signed it at the end. Must put your signature on it. Prove it's your artwork, your masterpiece. Otherwise, if you don't eat them, it's morning. Um, let me just put that pencil for me. There. Just a couple of, of the ready ones. I think I am 
done. So that is my Huntsman Spider, who we now know is not as deadly and scary as I thought, at least, um, and likes to hunt their prey down rather than spin webs. They live under things like rocks and bark and trees, and they can run at a metre per second to catch things like insects to eat for their diet. So that's pretty cool. I learned a load of new things today. I hope you did too. Um, don't forget to upload your picture on the post that you see around 6pm tonight. If, you, if you're one of those people, well, like me, who forgets everything, um, set an alarm on your phone for 6pm so you know to then check Facebook for the image. You're looking for the picture of this and then you can comment on with your photo of your artwork and I'll come along and give you some feedback. It must be before 9pm. Um, and then I hope you look, uh, join us next week where we are going to be studying the stonefish, which I'm pretty sure is lethal, we'll find out. Um, another fascinating creature, the last one of Australia before we take a week's half term and then we come back and do a few sessions on Czechoslovakia. So later this week I'll be creating the events for these on Facebook so you can look ahead and see what we're going to be drawing, maybe plan it into your um, planners or your studies and hopefully you join us then. Thank you so much for keeping us company. Always a pleasure, best best part of my week. Um, I look forward to seeing your fabulous artwork late this evening. Bye. See you later.